My first experience with electric scooters was actually with the Gotrex GXL V2. Love the scooter. I've put 900 miles, over 900 miles, on the scooter, commuting back and forth to work in the last year in the summertime. In fact, I scooted all the way through late fall where, uh, you know, temperatures were around freezing in the mornings. Love the scooter, but now I love this Hover One Blackhawk even more. For most entry-level scooters, you're capped out at 15 and a half miles an hour, like the Gotrex GXL V2. The Hover One Blackhawk, for me, maxed out at about 19 miles per hour when it's fully charged. While it doesn't sound like a lot, that difference is very noticeable. So much so that I don't feel, at least for me, that I would want a scooter to go much faster or any faster than that. All right, there are three bars left on the battery on the scooter. I'm gonna try to go up this slight incline, not very steep, but you'll, you'll see the difference in terms of the speed that we can achieve. Getting up to 10 miles an hour on this hill, nine, eight, roughly eight, eight to nine miles an hour. Now the go tracks. It's got three out of four bars remaining, so if you're all slightly more charged, not by a whole lot, going up that very same hill. Going up the hill at almost 13. Getting 13, all 13. Another big thing that I should point out are the differences in the battery. The GoTrax comes with a 5.2 amp hour battery that allows me to go, ooh, you know, generally around eight miles before I need to recharge. Um, although by that time, I end up having about one bar left. With the Hover One, number one, the battery is 10.4 amp hour. I've gone 12 miles and still have three bars remaining after a full charge. In addition, the Hover One battery is removable. Tire size does matter. The 10 inch tires on the Hover One Blackhawk is so much more comfortable to ride on compared to the eight and a half inch on the Gotrax GXL V2. Less bumps, less concerns going over cracks on the road. While I like the Hover One Blackhawk so much more compared to the Gotrax GXL V2, one of the things I do not like is actually when I do pump up the tires. You can see that the valve comes in at 90 degrees and because of that, it's a pain in the rear to pump the tire so much so that I have to use a valve extension to fully fill the air compared to, for example, the GXL V2 where the valve stem just comes out straight. Now, a nice feature about the cruise control on the Hover One Blackhawk is that if you hold the, um, you, hear, you hear that sound, right? So if you hold the throttle down for six seconds, it'll beep, telling you that the cruise control is engaged. On the GoTrax GXL V2, you have to hold it down for 10 minutes, I'm sorry, 10 seconds, 
and it doesn't let you know that the cruise control is engaged. Another item to note between the two scooters is the rare brake light. On the GXL V2, it's just a reflector versus for the Hover One Blackhawk, when you hit the brakes, the light comes on. One last thing I'd like to add is that this scooter appears to be made by this company called HX. And this company sells this model of scooter with slight variance in terms of, you know, different um, battery pack size, if you will, or uh, different tires. You know, this one has pneumatic tires. So this particular model comes in HX X8 model. There is the Turbo Ant X7 Pro, of course, the Hover One Blackhawk. There is the Levy Plus, also Slidgo, amongst other brands. There are a few others that I do not remember, but because it has been sold to so many different brands and companies, there is hopefully the potential that more parts will, will be available, much like the Xiaomi M365 in the future.